Saturday, happy Saturday. According to Hebrews 9.27. But God the Father sent his only son, according to Psalm second chapter, Isaiah 9 and 6, John 3.16, to satisfy that judgment for those who believe in his word. And being born again by that word, according to 1 Peter 1.23, through Jesus Christ, the Creator, the only begotten Son of God, the Holy One of Israel, who came down and lived a sinless life, who loved us so much that he died for our sins, according to 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, and taking the punishment that we deserve to the cross and was buried on the Wednesday, according to Daniel 9, 26 through 27, and rose from the dead on the Sabbath day, according to the Holy Bible, Luke 24, 1 through 7, if you truly believe and trust in your, your heart and do and keep his commandments, receiving Jesus, the word of God, according to St. John 1 and 1 through 4, the Holy One of Israel, and he alone as your Savior, according to Isaiah 45 and 15, and declaring that he is Lord, you will be in first resurrection, according to Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. And in his rest for the people of God, according to Hebrews 4 and 9 through 11. And you shall be given judgment, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 2 through 3. And spend eternity with God in Zion, according to Psalms 132, verses 13 through 14. So again, welcome to the Bible Christians of God and our brother Jacob. And this is our opening statement. And I would like to get into our series that we're doing for today. We continue in the new birth, new life in Christ, even for the month of May. And in today's lesson, we continue in part two of the early childhood development from the nursery to the kindergarten. And what I want to do today is, in part two, is because the new life in Christ, as we laid off with last week, makes you a babe in Christ. And as a babe in Christ, you need the essentials, you need the basics, and that's what we're going to deal with. Just like a newborn babe who just came out where they got to have that basic nutrition, nutrients that they need to live outside their mother's womb as a newborn babe. And that's the intent of this part two. We're going to give you a little bit, just a little essentials that you need as a newborn believer in Christ as a newborn babe by the word of God. So by doing so, I'm going to go to Mark 10 and 15. Mark 10 and 15. Because uh, there are four stages to serving God. We, I uh, iterated that early on. You have your early childhood development. Then you have your essential, uh, sorry, elementary years. Then you have your task and mission years. And that takes you to being an elder in the word of God. But let's go to Mark 10 and 15. Because as we laid off last week, uh, with Matthew's 18 chapter, Jesus said, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall no wise enter to the kingdom. Well, here's a similar, and actually it's the same thing. And we're going to give you the words of the kingdom. We're going to give you just enough so that you understand as a newborn babe, because children have a short span of attention, attention span, right? a very short attention span. So we're going to look at some very little, little milk things, little baby things that you need as you begin your new life in Christ. Basic stuff, and we're going to let Jesus break it down. But let's go to Mark 10 and verse 15. Mark 10 and verse 15. Look what Jesus, because this is a little child he had. And watch what it says here. Mark 10 and verse 15. Read. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. Now hold on. Jesus is bringing a qualification here. Let's be mindful of what we're looking at. Verily I say unto you, verily means truly, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, as a little child, 
It practically mirrors what we can read in Matthew the 18th chapter. It said, you be converted and become as little children. Parallel. Same thing the Lord is saying here. Same thing. You got to receive the kingdom of God as a little child. Go ahead. He shall not enter therein. You ain't getting in. And when are we to receive this, y'all? Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 28. Hebrews chapter 12 chapter verse 28. That's the New Testament. Before the book of James, almost till at the end of all of the epistles, before you get to the book of Revelations, we go into Hebrews 12 and verse 28. Let's see when can we receive this kingdom. Watch how the writers to the Hebrew states here. Hebrews 12 and 28. Because we're going to give you the milk. Like we went in our discussion uh, Wednesday night. What's milk and what's meat for a babe? So I'm going to give you some milk. Some very simple baby food. We're going to walk you from milk to about baby food. Not going to give you no meat. Because as newborn babes in Christ, you ain't even got no teeth to chew on the meat. Just like a newborn babe. That's why the Lord put the compare Become as a little child. You ain't got the teeth to handle the meat. But you got to receive this kingdom. And watch what Paul, Paul says here. Hebrews 12 and I said verse 28. Read. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom. No, she said, wherefore we receiving a kingdom. He didn't say shall. Because this kingdom we're talking about ain't talking about the physical one. It's talking about the spiritual one. Because those of us that have received the kingdom have become as little children. So that we may enter in the kingdom that is to come. That's why with the Lord's prayer, you say, Our Father, which art in heaven. You would say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So you receive, like he's saying here, wherefore we receiving a kingdom. Go ahead. Which cannot be moved. It can't be moved. Word of God can't be moved, y'all. You can follow away, but the word of God, we can read it by it forever. It is so powerful, it transforms lives. That's why I said, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter the end. So we receive this, y'all. We receive. This is what happens when you are converted. You receive the kingdom. He said, which cannot be moved. Go ahead. Let us have grace. See, we have grace. Go ahead. Whereby we may serve God. And we serve God. When we say we receive the kingdom, we are stating we serve God. And we have grace to serve God. That's why he said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God. Go ahead. Acceptably with reverence and, and godly fear. And how are we to serve him? Because we receive the kingdom. Uh, with acceptability, with what? Reverence and godly fear. Godly fear. So that's newborn babe. This is what you are on the path, in the in the growth. That's why I had before me these images from going from a babe, crawling babe, learning how to stand up to walk. Now he's a young boy walking. Same way with you. So now let's go to... Uh, Matthew's 11 chapter. Matthew's 11 and 28. It's the first book of the New Testament. And watch what Jesus says here. Because as a newborn babe, this is what we need. This is what a newborn babe needs. Matthew's 11 and verse 28. Matthew's 11 chapter and verse 28. Knew what Jesus says. Read. Come unto, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. No, he said, Come unto me, all ye that are labor, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're gonna look at this rest he's talking about. Go ahead. Take my yoke upon you. Yes. And learn of you. See, of me. see, he said, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn 
of me. Because you know about the ways of sin and wickedness and deception and all of the stuff the Lord told us to put away. Hypocrisy knew all about that. So now you have to learn. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Go ahead. For I am weak and lowly in heart. Yes. You shall find rest into your soul. Yes. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And see, the Lord put this on the table for the first time he set his church up. Let's go to Deuteronomy 5 and 1. Deuteronomy 5 and 1. That's in the Old Testament. That's in the first five books of the Bible. First five books of the Bible. Look what he did for his, his firstborn. When he first set up his church. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 1. Read. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears mm -hmm. this day. That you may learn. Them. That you may what? Learn. Them. See, they had to learn because they had just came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So now, when he brought them out of Egypt, he said, O Israel, the statutes, hear the statutes and judges which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them. See, now you're in a learning state. When you come into Christ as a newborn baby, you need to learn him. And we're going to figure out what we got to learn about. We're going to give you the, the, the milk, baby food. Not going to drop meat on you. But here, Jesus is following the same model that he did, had he done, that he had done in the first church. He said that ye may learn them. Go ahead. And keep. And yeah. do them. And keep and what? Do them. Okay. So now let's go to St. John 14 and 6. And what is it that we need to learn about Jesus? St. John, this New Testament, 14 and 6. Because he said, take my yoke upon and learn of me. St. John 14 and verse 6. These are the words that we are putting in the nursery, in the kindergarten. Okay? This is at the kindergarten. This is for those that's in the kindergarten level, y'all. That just come into the word. What if you just newborn, newly birthed to the word? What is it that you need to learn about Jesus? That religion ain't going to give you. But the word of God gives you. Because you've been born again of what? The word of God. You have received his kingdom. A kingdom you had never been in before. So right here, let's go there. John 14 and verse 6. St. John 14 and verse 6. Read. And Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Now hold up. Just take our time. He said, see, we got to learn that Jesus is the way. Go ahead. The truth. See, and the truth. You can't say you got the way with Jesus and you ain't got no truth. Mm -hmm. So as receiving the kingdom, you receive the truth. Not just a way, but the way that has the truth in it. Go ahead. In the life. And this way has life when you have truth in it. Go ahead. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, and to get to the Father, you got to come through Jesus. Flat out. How you going to get there? By the way which contains the truth and the life subscribed as it's subscribed and written this here Bible. The Holy Bible, okay? So now, let's go learn something about Jesus. Because he said, take my yoke upon you. Let's go to Matthew 12 and 6. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to go to Matthew 12 chapter and verse 6. And we just drop a little, just a little baby food. Just a little milk. These are milk. This is milk right here. And what we're going to talk about is Jesus being the way, the truth, and life. And one thing about him is that he is the Lord of the Sabbath day. This very day that we are observing. 
Now watch how he states this. Read. 12 and 6. Yeah, 12 and 6. But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. Mm -hmm. But if he had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You will not have condemned the guiltless. Now see, the Lord has expressed to these Jews, look, but I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Why is he saying greater than the temple? Keep going. Verse 8, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. So he is the Lord of the Sabbath day, this day. This day. Remember Jesus said, learn of who? Learn of me. So when we learn that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day, no wonder he's greater than the temple. Okay? So now, let's understand this about Jesus by going to Hebrews 12 and 28. Hebrews 12 and 28. Hebrews 12 chapter and verse 28. Read. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be... Made. I'm sorry, I got the wrong verse, 13. <laughs> 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 chapter and verse 8. Now remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. Then we say, learn of me. So now we've just learned that he is the Lord of this day, the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. In forever. So now, understand that he is the Lord of the Sabbath day. He doesn't change. So, observing the Sabbath day can never change. Or if you get another Jesus, then you don't have the one the Bible talks about, which is the Lord of the Sabbath day. Now, let's go and show you that how long this has been around, y'all. Let's go to St. John 8 and 56. Jesus has a day. This day, he is the Lord of, and he changed now. John 8 and 56. St. John, 8 chapter and verse 56. Watch what he was telling these Pharisees. Read. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Wait a minute. Remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day, and he said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see what? My day. Which means Jesus has been around way longer than when he was in the flesh. And he said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Go ahead. And he saw it. And he saw it. Who's talking here? Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath day. So Abraham knew about the Lord's Sabbath day. And he saw it and was what? And was what? Yes. Next north on Denton Meadows Court toward Garner Grove Lane. Then turn left onto Garner Grove Lane. Go ahead. Verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old. And has thou seen Abraham? See, they were thinking of Jesus from the point of the flesh and karma. But watch what Jesus responds with. Because they're thinking, you ain't even 50 years old, man. How you seen Abraham? And how has thou seen Abraham? Verse, verse, verse 58. Verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. Oh, no wonder he's the Lord of the Sabbath day. Because before Abraham was, he said, I am. That's why he's the Lord of the Sabbath day. So now we've learned that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. This day, he don't change. And he's been around way before Moses. And he said, before Abraham was, 
I am. So now, let's go and look at his custom by going to Luke 4 and 15. Let's look at what Jesus did when he came down. Luke 4 and verse 15. Because we want to learn of Jesus. Luke 4 chapter and verse 15. Read. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. So now this is what Jesus did. In learning about him, Jesus went, to, as his custom was, on the, to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So Jesus attended the synagogue. On the Sabbath day, this was his custom. And he stood up for the what? For to read. Go ahead. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it, where it was written. Uh-huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So we see the Spirit of the Lord was upon the Lord that was in the flesh. It led him to go to church on the Sabbath day. This is the spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And every minister that you stand before is supposed to have this spirit that leads them to go to church on the Sabbath day and to preach the gospel to the poor. Talking about the poor in spirit. You can't preach to people that's rich in spirit. They ain't hear nothing. They're just rolling off. Because you can't tell them nothing. Nevertheless, to preach the gospel to the poor, go ahead. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh -huh. To preach deliverance to the captive. Mm -hmm. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. See, look at all the stuff we're learning about Jesus. This is what Jesus' mission was. Okay? So now, let's go and look at the Paul followed Christ. We, as Bible believers, or new being born of the Word, we're supposed to follow the Word. And as we've shown you in, in, uh, in this series, Jesus is the Word. So now let's go and see did Paul follow this pattern. Let's go to Acts 18. And one, Acts 18 chapter. Now, Acts 18 chapter is the history of the church. Contains the history of the church under the new covenant. So we're going to Acts 18. We're going to read verse 1, and then we're going to read verse 4. Acts 18 and verse 1. So now we've learned that before Abraham was, Jesus existed. He's the Lord of the Sabbath day, and he changed not. He changed not. Now, let's see if Paul follow a Christ. Acts 18 and verse 1. Read. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. 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 Because see, Paul, that's why you go look at Paul's letters. He got a lot of letters to different places because Paul traveled around a lot. Okay? So now he came to Corinth, and let's get down to verse, uh, verse 4. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. and, he, <clears throat> and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath mm -hmm. and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Oh, so this is Paul. He reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath. So he was a follower of Christ. And he was there, and who was there on the Sabbath day? Both Jews and Greeks. So this wasn't a thing about a Jewish Sabbath day. The Jews teach the Sabbath and the Christians. No, if you're a follower of Christ, then you keep the Sabbath because you believe in the Lord of the Sabbath day. And that's why the Jews and the Greeks was there. Go ahead. Verse 5, and when Silas and Timothy were come to Macedonia, 
Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. See, now look, why were they keeping the Sabbath day? Let's see what they were remembering to do by going to Exodus 20 and verse 8. We're going to go to Exodus 20th chapter and verse 8. Paul was traveling, but he remembered to do this every Sabbath day. Every time the Sabbath came, this is what Paul was doing. Exodus 20th chapter and verse 8. So he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? Holy. Go ahead. Six days of thy labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. Understand? But the seventh day is the Sabbath, uh, Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yes. And if thou should do, shall not do any work, thou nor thy son, mm -hmm. nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle. Nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. Uh huh. So this is for everybody. No wonder the Jews and the Greeks were there. No wonder the Jews, both Jew and Greek, because this is the Lord, because they were believing, they were following the Lord on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The sea and all that in the men mm -hmm. and rested the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now notice, it says, because the Lord labored six days and made, when he made heaven and earth and all that's therein. And he rested the Sabbath day. So remember, he said, I will give you what? Rest. That's how you observe the Lord's Sabbath day because it represents his rest or he giving you what? Rest. You see that? So now let's do ourselves a favor and let's go to Leviticus 23. This is the statues. Just like the Lord had Moses teach him. He said, look, learn the statues and judgments. Watch this, y'all. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feet of the Lord, which ye should proclaim to be holy communication. Uh -huh. Even these are my feet. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the rest, and a holy communication. Now, what is a holy convocation? It is a holy gathering. So, this is a statue that goes to the Sabbath day when you're keeping it holy. And remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day and before Abraham was he said I am so this is the Lord Jesus here this is the Lord Jesus stating six days shall work be done but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation so we rest on this day and we gather on this day go ahead you should do no, no work during uh -huh. it is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwelling. And then we read what Jesus is the Lord of the what? Sabbath day. So now let's go and confirm that the first day of the week is not the Sabbath day by going to Matthew's 28 chapter. And if we took out a calendar or you go and look at the calendar in your house or in your phone, you will notice Monday through uh, Saturday, Sunday is the first day of the week. Today is the seventh day. So Matthew 28 and verse 1. Matthew 28 and verse 1. Read. In the end of the Sabbath. Oh, oh, in the end of the Sabbath. Let's slow things down. So as the Sabbath is ending, what are we going into? Go ahead. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, uh -huh. came Mary Madeline 
and the other married to see the subject. So we see the first day that we comes after today. Today is the Sabbath day. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. The apostles follow Jesus' steps and they follow behind him in keeping the Sabbath day. Even Paul, he kept the Sabbath day. So now let's go to uh, Matthew 15 chapter and verse 7. So anytime someone telling you you should be going on another day, this is what the Lord is called. Because remember, you're being born again by the what? Word of God. And nowhere in the Bible does the word of God. Matter of fact, I was uh, uh, asking Google last night. Let me see if I can pull it up. And we're going to let Google tell you what the Sabbath day is, too. Matter of fact, let me try to do that now. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull this up. Google, what is the Sabbath day according to the Bible? Uh-oh. Hold on. I don't think it's... Hold on. Hold on. Let me put Google online. We're going to ask her again. Google, what is the Sabbath day according to the Bible? According to Wikipedia, we should observe the seventh day of the week, from even to even, as the Sabbath of the Lord our God. Evening is at sunset when day ends and another day begins. No other day has ever been sanctified as the day of rest. The Sabbath day begins at sundown on Friday and ends at sundown on Saturday. Interesting. So you can go and... Look this up for yourself, and even Google tells you what the Bible tells you concerning the Lord Sabbath day. Now, let's read Matthew 15, chapter, and verse 7, okay? Because remember, as newborn babes, we ought to put away hypocrisy and all evil speakings and lies. So that come out of Google. You can have anyone that, you, that has a problem with you, or question you why you go to church on this Sabbath day, just ask them to pull out their phone and ask them to ask Google what day does the Bible say is the Sabbath day? And it will tell you what we just heard. Right there. They got the answer right there. So if they're not keeping the Lord's Sabbath day because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day, then this is what the Lord said right here. Matthew 7, 15 and 7. Read. Ye hypocrites, mm -hmm. what did Isaiah prophesied of you, mm -hmm. saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, mm -hmm. and honoreth me with their lips, uh -huh. but their heart is far from me. See, we put our hearts, because you've had your translation. You deny the God, so now you know he's the Lord of the Sabbath day, and he don't change. Mm -hmm. Your heart was far from the Lord. Now it's not by the word of God. Go ahead. Verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Some man told them to go to church on tomorrow. That's in vain. That's vain worship. Very vain worship. Okay? So what we learn about Jesus at this point, he's the Lord of the Sabbath day. He changes not. Abraham saw his day and was glad. I mean, Abraham kept the Sabbath day. His custom was, Jesus' custom was to go to church on this Sabbath day. And we ought to be followers of Christ, just as even all the way down to when Paul came. Paul was keeping the Sabbath day. And we know that it is the day of rest, because he said, I will give you rest. And it's the day to have a holy what? Gathering. Okay? So this concludes my lesson at this time, Early Childhood Development Part 2.